What's up, YouTube? This is Dog back with another Transformers review. This is part two of Transformers Masterpiece Movie MPM7 Bumblebee. This is from the new Bumblebee movie. Please check it out in theaters December 21st. Also, please check out the links in my description and down in the comment section below to check out the store, showzstore.com. They have great prices, and they're they're a great store to deal with. Um, they've actually been helping me out a little bit, so thank you to them. And, uh, yeah, so let's continue on with the review. So yesterday I did part one, which was basically a review on the car mode and to robot. Now we're doing part two, which is a review on the robot and then a transformation instructions to car. Hopefully it all goes well as planned. All right, so checking out him in robot mode. He's very, very nice in robot mode. Let's see if we can get a little bit more lighting there for you. Yeah, so let's just check out a close-up of his head sculpt real quick. So, yeah, not bad. It should have a little bit more wash in the Autobot symbol. It does have a very small amount, as you can see around. That's not just the molding. That is actually a low amount of paint. Got some silver decos, metallic decos here on the top of these kind of horns, or below the horns, these little separate horns. And his cheeks are in metallic silver as well as his face. And then he's got translucent blue eyes that are not um, that are not uh, light piping. But you can lift up his head. You can take off the top of his helmet. And you can take his mask, which is over here. Um, hold on, guys. And let me just set it. Oh, let's get that in a second. It's got a couple little, it's got like a little slot, a little tab. You just kind of set it up on top. Just tab it in. And then what really holds it down, you kind of just hold it and then go like that. That holds it together. And there's his awesome battle mask, which is painted yellow. And he's also got the honeycomb effect in the eyes. And you can see, if you're really close, you can see the eyes behind the honeycomb mask. Although they should have made it a little bit more translucent because that would have been kind of cool. But you can see the sides. There's the back of the head. How it's sculpted all correct. Got the ears and everything. Looks good. So there's that. All right. Next up, we have... You got this fade. That I didn't really show in um, the car mode review. I didn't really s explain about the fade that much. I should have said more about it. But you got this nice silver or gray paint kind of on the arms here. You can see it's gray painted because it's got the black plastic underneath. So that looks good. I think parts of it is, or maybe it's black. It's hard to tell, really, to be honest. You got a little bit of metallic paint up there as well as on the back of these wheel wells. Or the back of these wheels, tires. And we have... This is what his arms look like. You got this panel on the back, which is painted. This is what he looks like from the back. I guess the way that Hasbro wanted you to do it is they want it, they want you to do it something like this. And there's ways to peg it all together. But we're going to do it my way, which is looks more accurate to the movie, which is you suck the wings in. There's a little double hinge right there, and you just push it back as far as you can go. And get those out of the way, just like that. Whoops. But as you can see, there's another gimmick. You can lift these up. We have die-cast steel with nice red paints where all the battery of missiles is. It's like a battery of missiles. Very cool. They should have painted this. Had they painted this, that would have made all the difference in the figure, I think. It just does not look good with the plastic yellow right there, in my opinion. Going down, we got some silver kind of weird details. You got some almost like... If you look, it's like a, it almost looks translucent, but it's like this blue-gray paint for these wires just in that one little spot. And you can see all the die casts. There's die casts up here, goes in there. The whole joint is die cast. These little bars right here are die cast to help you be able to pull the, I, I think that's what they're for. Well, they're probably also accurate, but they also help you pull up the double joint. We'll show you that in transformation mode. This is all plastic underneath here, but it is die cast quite a bit. We also have die cast joints on his feet. We have die cast front shins, die cast bottom of his feet. Actually, the entire foot is die cast, the front part of the foot. And it's painted yellow on top. Die cast little 
connecting spots in there as well as where was the other piece of die cast um i think that's it uh, for that part anyway and then there's a lot of die cast in like pins and things but all right so moving back down you can see that see i don't know if that's different i guess it's separate plastic but it's nice how they use the gray plastic and then the black plastic they do it here too really well and i don't know if part part of that's probably paint it's hard to tell i know i was just talking about but you can see little details painted on up here as well it looks nice and they got this all painted in yellow see they even painted all this in yellow which doesn't show up in car mode so why not paint that that would have made it they have it you know what I mean? That would have made awesome difference. Hopefully they do a re-release at some point and paint that up. But not bad. Not bad at all. That's what he looks like from the back. And he is posable. Let's just show you. So you got all kinds of posing. He has a waist swivel. And we'll show you the articulation as well. But, but just to show you how posable, how easy it is to get in poses and whatnot. He's not bad at all for getting in poses. So, here, we'll do a regular pose, like a regular fighting pose. It'll look better than that. There. Boom. And he, his feet are stable this time, unlike the MPM3, which have really wobbly feet. Speaking of articulation, I guess we'll start up here. He does have a little bit of a ball joint, but it only goes side to side. There's nothing up and down, more besides little bit down and nothing up so get i don't know but that's his and you can also swivel on that joint but it's not real ball joint it's more like if you look there's a little peg that's rocking on that so it's not a ball joint it's a loose peg or something but anyways and then this part will move out but it does it on its own which is pretty cool engineering the only articulation I really despise is the neck articulation. Like, of all this good articulation, why not... You can lift it up a little more if you lift it up higher. Why not put good neck articulation in? But anyways, you can swivel around like that. There's no butterfly, but you get 90-degree bend. Maybe just a hair more. Probably 92, 95, I don't know. Get the bicep swivel at the elbow. We have a wrist swivel. That will go 360. You can also hinge in. It's basically for transformation, but I think a lot of times they build that for both. You got the thumb that will swivel on this hinge. Let me see if we can get a better, better way to show you. There we go. You got this swivel on this hinge, and then it will also go up and down, that hinge, but you can't go, this does not go up and down. But you also get three different individual fingers. So the back two... They do, you know, they do come in on their own. And then this one has its own little hinge on the index finger. So you get that. You get a full waist swivel. So that's cool. No crunch, but nice ratchets. Kick way up. Kick even higher than that. You can kick right up there. Kick back. You can even get everything out of the way. You can kick way up, out more than 90 up to the side, and it will hold for the most part. You get the upper thigh swivel. That works quite well. You get a bend at the knee, which if you loosen this up a little bit, you can get the full 90. But I believe if you get this out of the way, there was a, something I did in the first take. Yeah, like that. Or maybe it's this thing out of the way. Let me try. I don't know. There's a way to get it to go more. You have to kind of lo loosen up just for pictures or something. But anyways, you get the ankle tilt. You can hear the ratchets. Nice ratchets. Ankle tilt. It goes way in on tilts. So I guess you can technically do your whole wide stance. But no one does that. Not even robots. <laughs> Especially robots. Uh, we'll pick this back in just for... There we go. I'm going to show you how to do that in transformation. He's got the wheel on the outside. <laughs> Oops. Get this accurate. Anyways, um, he can go. He's got a foot toe. 
and that's about it for his ankles. So that's his articulation. And then these also move up and down, like I showed you. His wings, his articulation, you got the double hinge. You got the one, two, is that a third hinge? Yep, so triple hinge. You get a hinge here, a hinge here, and then a hinge at the base. You also get a little bit of a swivel if, I think, I don't know, maybe it's locked together because of this. But if you unlock this, it probably swivels, right? Well, never mind. Anyways, I wonder if you can use this as part of a bu butterfly. Oh, yeah. Check that out. I wonder if that makes any difference from this. Not really, but you might be able to get some posing from it. Anyways, that's just de de lodging that. All right, so gimmicks. He also comes with a couple gimmicks. You get this, and his mask actually attaches here. You can check out part one. Uh, just this little tab, there's a slot on the top of his mask. It pegs in there. His mask is facing forward. And then this pegs into the back of the car. You can see all that in part one. But in part two, we're doing robot. And then robot to car, which I'll show you again. You can peg that into the side there. It's got nice Cybertronian writing or something all on the sides. I guess it's kind of Cybertronian. You got some silver metallic paint, some black paint, and some yellow plastic yeah no plate so that's that and then on this side the way you do this is this is cool is you take this swivel that like that and you have the hands kind of like that all fingers you take this and you put the fingers is that right no this way you put the fingers into the hole there's a hole right there and then oh yeah you gotta have your thumb kind of hinged downward so when you go in like that, you can put your thumb in the inside of there. That's right. Yep. And then there's a little tab in the back right there that tabs into a hole right there. Like that. And then it's a integrated arm cannon, which is the coolest arm cannon accessory that Bumblebee's ever had. It's got a little bit of black paint on the tips with some metallic silver on the ends. Metallic gunmetal. And silver. And even yellow paint. So, awesome, awesome job. And you can make it look cool, too. Because he's got this joint right here. So you can do one of these type of deals and get him all posed up. With his knife and his gun. Boom! Ready to shoot the, any Decepticon coming into his territory now we'll do a little bit of a comparison here we'll do it with the old leader the first edition leader optimus prime which actually had a couple of reviews um done of classic figures but i got a bunch of people unsubscribed i think it was like five people one day which is for me that's unnormal it's because i was doing classic reviews but i was trying to get I was trying to do some stuff, but anyways, you can see he's much smaller, but fits in pretty well, I guess if you look. So that's what he looks like. In size, he is uh, six and a half inches tall, which I do believe we get, went over in the last review. Oh, no, we didn't. Sorry, that was a different take. But anyways, all right, so for transformation... We want to start by removing all this stuff. The way you remove that is just untab there. And let's see if we can get the lights going back first. There we go. And then just untab there and then pull out. No big deal. And then just for simplicity fake sake of the... Lift that up, pull this out, and we're going to put this back on. This is his head. Actually fits better. You don't need to push this down to keep it on. The other one you do. So there's his Bumblebee helmet. All right, so what you do here is you take this tab into there. And you take this helmet into there. Just like that. I think it might actually be something like this. I'm not sure, maybe it's wrong. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be that. But either way, it works. All right. Oh, one other thing you can do. You can take the helmet and you can put it on here. Just out of the way. You can put it on. There's a little tab right there. You can just kind of slot it 
on there like that. So it can be held up in storage. He's also slow if that helps you. Alright, so we're going to remove that. I'm going to pull these up. We're going to do the transformation now. Transformation, we're going to start by the hands, I guess. So the hands, I believe, you want to put the hand in like that and then curl around the hand. Like this. I believe. Alright, and we're going to take the back. I'm going to open it up like that all the way. All right. Same thing with this side. Same thing. Thumb in that. Also want to hinge this down. Did I say that? Yeah, hinge that down. Open the back up. Spool it around, I believe. Or we'll just leave it for now. Okay, so we have that. Next, we're going to do... Um, I guess we're going to do the feet. So the way you do the feet is you take these and you tab them in because you want to make sure they're tabbed in for when it's in vehicle mode. Tab them in like that. All right. Next, we're going to take this. This is a tab. You want to untab that. There's a little metal tab that goes into that plastic part right there. Fold it sideways like this, then fold this back up. You want to take this little plastic piece right there and put it up like that. All right. Now we're going to come back around here. You're going to re-straighten this back out and tab that in right here. We're going to come under here. And we're going to undo this. And if you want to go back in, the best way to do that is when you're going back in is you, is you put it like this. And then you kind of squish it up against it. There's a tab slot right there that goes into that tab. And once you do, you can push everything up. Because a lot of times you tab it in. Let me give you an example. So you tab it in, it's like that. So you just push it in like that to make it as... Up there as possible anyways we're going to disconnect that now we're going to go and we're going to use this swivel well first we'll take this wheel and we'll pull it out so we can get a little bit more sight then you take this and you swivel it this way and then you swivel it down so it gets out of the way you see that'll give you room to go back now you take this and you push this back like that, and you flip that up like this. Now what the whole idea is to get up and around like that. And then you can swivel this back up like that. All right. Same thing with the other side. We're not going to do anything with this for right now. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to straighten that back out. Actually, first we'll do the foot. So you open that. Close this. Close that little plastic up. We already closed this part up. Take the wheel out. I'm going to take this and shift it down. Like that. That'll give us room to be able to... Well, we want to flatten this part. Like this and then like that. So when we go up and around which it will go up and around. It looks like that. Okay. Then you can kind of squish that back over. And then there's a tab slot right there and a tab right there. But mine never tab together, but maybe yours will. Maybe it just never lines up. I don't know. But mine never really tab together. These kind of tab together, but then these won't. They will, but they don't stay. So it doesn't really matter. Yours might, because I've seen others um comments where they do okay this straightens back out and then what you want to do is you want to pull this down all the way on that hinge same thing on this side and we're going to attach this mine always go everywhere they don't really tab in that well unfortunately so that makes it really difficult to do this whole thing but tab that in tab that in Hopefully this will change. 
Okay, so we want it like that. Next up, we're going to take this and we're going to pull that out. Pull this out. And that'll allow you to pull all this up like that. But what we're going to do, just to leave some room, is we're going to push this back up. That's the way I do it, just to give room to see. Then we take these, and we're going to pull these out and straighten them back down because they go up like that. Then you take this and raise this up like that, and then swivel down. And then what you do is there's a little tab right there that goes into that slot right here. And you want to do it like this. You want to push it as hard as possible. So it lines up even like that. That is probably pretty key to do it like that. Why is this? feels like something is off. Maybe it's supposed to be like that? I guess so. Anyways. All right. Next, this two. Like that. Up and over. Tab that tab in right there. If you do it correctly, and if your figure is good... It should not leave too much of a gap. Mine leaves a gap on one side. Then you want to straighten these bad boys out. Give you more room. Just like that. Next, we're going to turn them back around. We're going to leave these up. We're going to flip these in underneath, these faux bumper pieces. Flip them underneath the car. I'm going to take this and grab by these kind of like these things, these die cast parts more die cast you can see die cast there and i don't know if there's any underneath but no it's just these little parts right here which is weird but those are definitely die cast but anyways you want to do that and you pull it up on this dual hinge all right and then you flip the head back when you flip the head back you should be able to pull this out of the way it's just like that all right, next, we're going to want to try to get it in. Well, he's actually stayed together pretty well. See that? All right, so now we want to, we're going to have to work these out. So what this is, is you pull this out of its joint. There's a little slot. You can see the hole right there. And there's a tab. You see how it goes in. You want to pull it out, raise it down and out, just like that. And then that'll allow you to swivel this 180 degrees. Like this. Like that. So it's downward. So you want it essentially like, like this. With both of them down. But the key here is, you see that, how it's like that? You're going to want this black part to be bent down. You see there's a hinge right here. You see how it's bending? This black part right here. You want it down. Get this stuff. Yeah. Like that. And then you want to take the tab that's on this and the tab that's... You also want this one down too. So we're going to have to do this side too. So we'll undo that. Pull this down. Start swiveling this 180 around like that. That should leave us room enough... Oh, see, things are starting to twist now. Right? Don't twist. That tab right there is going to tab into that other part right there. This is why you need room here. This is why it's very difficult. To get these tabbed in is important. And you need to make sure that that, that black part is aimed down at the same time. Like that. Then you can tab everything together up there. Hopefully it tabs together right. Doesn't feel like it is. There we go. Tabbed it together. It's still pointed down on both sides. Swivel these around so they're on the outside. Making sure the fists are like that. Oh, shit. Give me a hard time now. They're so close. All right. And then this part as well. So that needs to go like this. This needs to go out. And then untabbed. That's still down. That's still down. Good, good. And then this goes down like that. Tilted like that. And you want these to be tilted down too. With the thumbs the way I showed you. 
Actually, well, I'm pretty sure anyway. And then that like that. Now we can pull these out. And this is on a friction tab, so be careful. What I mean by that is, say friction. <laughs> Which creates a lot of friction, trust me. <laughs> All right, next you want to make sure that these... Uh, there's a little hole, or there's a little tab right there. You see that gray above my fingernail, my thumbnail? That little tab right there. You're going to want to take the end of this gray part right here and have that go into that hole. I thought... going on give me one second i realized what i did i had this flipped around you need to flip it so the square part is forward that'll allow you to, to lock that onto that tab all right well, hopefully there we go lock it on that tab make sure it's locked it shouldn't lock i don't know why it's not as you can see, the arms are my hardest part. They, like, really, really, really uh, irritate me, guys. I just, I don't know what the heck is, why they won't stay. But, same thing with this. You want it to lock onto that tab. Like that. Okay. And as you can see, the hands twist and stuff. You don't want that. That's a pain in my, you know. And, and the hands get all messy. And this is not the way you want it. Anyways. All right. So basically something like that. You're going to want to pull all this out now. And the... And then we're going to want to swivel this forward. And then this hole right there is going to go onto that tab right there. Unfortunately, everything keeps moving around. And I never know. Honestly, I have a hard time with the hands. So please bear with me here. All right. So first up, you want to pull these up and over. Oh, the freaking thing fell off. Um, I think it's the other way, like this. And this, yeah, this part is another... The whole thing in, in front of camera, getting into car mode, is just not fun. I've done this a few times, and, I, and I've not been successful every time. Hopefully this time I'm more successful. I'm not talking about the bumper. I'm talking about the entire car mode, because everything keeps moving. You can't ever get anything to... Line up perfectly in front of the camera. It's just not easy. All right. So again, you want to swivel this back like this. And then you want to attach that hole under that tab. So you're going to want to make sure everything fits. Which something is not working right at the moment. There. And then this, you want that to slip up under there. The way I do it is you want that tab to go into that slot right there in the back one like that like this and then you slot everything in there like that same thing with this side you want that to go in there like that so you basically have it like this these need to come up you see what I'm saying? It's just a major pain in my... So we're going to leave it. Something is not right. Oh, it's because I didn't tab that stupid thing in. So if you tab that in first, it definitely helps. You don't have to give me a minute. You basically just have to wrestle with it until you get there. Then you see how everything lined up just like I had it. It's no different. I just had to work that part in because it was giving me a really hard time. And the key is to give that tab, that one, that square tab and that square hole right here. 
That's what, it, and then you also want to tab that in right after the one that you can see. We're going to leave that right now because we still have to do all this later. All right, so now the key point is this is as long as those are lined up, which I believe it is. Yes, it is. You can see that hole lined up there. You want to go under there and hook that little hook under here. And then the hardest part I have, especially on camera, is getting that hook right there under around those. So we're just going to have to work with it here. Um, basically, just kind of work with everything and get it to go. Like I said, mine is just super pain in my butt. Something is not always lining up. It's just, if it's not one thing, it's another. There we go. And then once you get everything in, you can hold it. You can hold it down like this kind of and hopefully if everything is lined up correctly you can kind of push it together like that once you have it together like that it's not too hard when you can pull it up close to your chest and then you can hold that in hold ease in Oops. but when you start getting frustrated it starts getting things like this going on it really, really frustrates you, dude. Like, ex extremely frustrating. Okay. And the key is to line this tab right there up. But it always sinks right there. So, it's just a matter of getting everything lined up. And then, see, I'm having everything lined up pretty good. And... Then we just got to have to fit it in place. One of the biggest problems is you have to line these tabs into the tr truck like that. And that one, you see how it's uneven right there because it doesn't pop in right. So it doesn't work right. And then you have to open up this and make sure that the hands are in right. Then you go like this. Then you can kind of tab everything together. And eventually you're going to get a car that looks better than before. So, and then the last part is you just take these and kind of lift these up. There's little slots and there's little divots. Lift those up, slot those in. And I just realized that the bumper fell off. Yay! Just when I had everything perfect. <laughs> Which I should have. All right, let's just undo it and retach everything together, I guess. So, and I guess if you have to do this, you just probably want to do what I'm doing now just kind of undo those push this stupid thing in back in make sure the other bumpers underneath come up above which sometimes can be hard if you've already like that and hopefully both sides will go in oops sorry about that and mine just oh you gotta be kidding me Mine, it just really does not like anything. <laughs> it, there's always going to be a part that is not going to work completely 100%, 100% good. Oh my god, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so rather than messing with this part all day, you can see the whole car mode. We already went through the car, but that's basically the transformation instructions. And then what you want to make sure is you want to make sure these are pushed up and then this is pushed up. So that way it will roll. And you take the mask like I showed you before. Pop that on there. Take those little tabs like that and pop them on there. Those that want to check out the car more in detail, check out my Part A review. Oh my god, really? It would have been perfect. You saw I had it perfect, but because I had to do these after it, and because my car is a I've never had problems with the Bumblebee before. There. So. And see? It's more stuff pops out. It just never freaking ends. I can get it sometimes, but on camera I haven't had much luck getting it into car mode. But at least it's it's there now. But anyways, leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe for more tour reviews. And as always, stay awesome, stay subbed, and stay tuned for the next video.